Hi everyone. It's been a little bit for, for me to have a regular episode. Um, hopefully you saw my Vogue Knitting Live uh, episode, my recap, and the things that I bought there. So welcome new viewers. I got a lot of new viewers the last few weeks, so super excited to have you join me. Um, it is Sunday morning where I live and work. Um, I am, my name is Shannon Bellum. I am a knitwear designer and university professor here in Northern New Jersey in the United States. Um, and I am going to talk to you today about knitting. I, this might be a bumper episode, so go get something to drink or if you want or eat and knit, get your knitting and settle in because um, I'm going to show you I have two finished objects and I have um, several new works in progress and some are new and some are just actually all of them are new except one. <laughs> so I've been busy <laughs> the last few weeks. So I hope that you um, will enjoy this episode and uh, yeah, let's get to it. Let me start with what I'm wearing. I see I have some lint on it. Um, I am wearing a, a cardigan, my first FO, a cardigan of my own design. It is made out of Clinton Hill cashmere. It's really gorgeous. This is her DK base. Um, I made it out of black, which is onyx, and a um, pale color that's I would say is like the color of the walls. Um, she calls it light sand, so it's a pale tan. Oh, wait, I have a little drab of it, so you can actually see it in the skein. So yeah, that's that's sand. Um, the I'm gonna pop a picture here of on screen and um, I think I'll probably, after I talk about this sweater, I'll swap the sweater so you can see um, for the rest of the episode what the bottom of the sweater looks like. It has some um, color work. I love these buttons. These are vintage buttons from around, I would guess around Victorian era, late Victorian era when um, Queen Victoria was mourning. She wore a lot of black um, clothing she wore she only wore black clothing she was mourning the death of her husband and she she it, it, you know the queen the queen set trends <laughs> so the, so everybody wore a lot more black um, in that time period as well and jet buttons were a big huge thing so um, I have a pretty extensive jet button collection so I'm trying to I've been trying to control the light. Yeah, I think I got, I think I generally get really good light on a Sunday, di Sunday, on a sunny, not Sunday, on a sunny day. Um, and it's gorgeous out. It's so cold, but it's beautiful blue skies, sunny today. So I love podcasting on sunny days. It's so less artificial light, but it is a little bit glary. So yeah. Okay. I think it's fine. I think it'll be overall good. Anyway, back to this. So this is a sweater of my own design. The design is uh, owned by Long Island Yarn and Farm. I originally made it for them um, and, well, I made it for them. Not only originally, but it's their design. Um, they paid me for it and um, it looks amazing in their yarn. I just decided to, I wanted to make, I like to have one piece of all of my designs and um, with, I had done this sweater for the Christy Glass birthday knit along that began January 1 and I wanted to cast on that first day of New Year's and I did um, and I wanted to finish it ahead of Vogue Knitting Live so that I could wear it there and I, I did um, but I didn't end up wearing it to Vogue Knitting Live um, and you know whatever it was fine. So I ended up wearing some other sweaters, some other hand knits, which, you know, worked out perfectly. And um, anyway, if you're interested in the design, it looks beautiful in Long Island Yarn and Farms yarns as well. She has some gorgeous, gorgeous new colors that I think would be amazing in it. Uh, so you can get in touch with her. She has a website, which I'll put in my notes, in my show notes. 
that you can go and check out. Um, I'll also link her in my um, in my show notes that I post on Ravelry. So if you're a Ravelry member, you'll be able to um, check out her her yarn and her other patterns and um, just see what they're all about. So. Um, but yeah, the, it's only, I found out uh, over Vogue Knitting Live weekend that the pattern is only available with yarn purchase, so from her. They don't sell them separately because they don't want to navigate the issues that knitters might have of um, switching into a different yarn, like using that their pattern in someone else's yarn. So, so. Um, I can tell you that for me, knitting from uh, Long Island Yarn and Farms Yarn, this design, and then switching over into uh, the Clinton Hill Cashmere, I, I put the mods down. I did make some modifications in color placement a little bit, and I changed the um, sleeve, the bottom of the sleeve, mostly because of the colors that I was using in this sweater versus the colors that I used in the sample, um, in the design that I, I made for them. Um, I used a sand, I'll put the, a picture in so you can see, but you can see I used like, I kind of did the reverse. I did a light colored um, main uh, ground and then a darker, a deeper contrasting color. And I just didn't want white cuffs <laughs> for that design. Um, and I also, and for this one too, I did not want white cuffs. So um, I just swapped things up a bit. Um, I don't think I knit um, a size, I think I, I think I got gauge if I recall right. I don't, I don't know. It's all in my show notes. I mean, not show notes, all on my project pages. I take copious notes um, while I'm knitting and I put, you know, anything that's relevant that, you know, I pr try to put very succinct mods of what I'm doing. Um, on my project pages. So you can see the project page that I made for Long Island Yarn and Farm and then also the one that I made for this sweater. But yeah, this is my first finished object of the year. This is, and it's also my first make nine. Um, I completed, che checked off a one make nine um, project already. So, um, so yeah. And if you're curious what my make nine are and you're a new viewer, I, on um, New Year's, I think it was New Year's Day or New Year's weekend, I made a podcast where I talked about my make nine. And I think it says make nine in the title of um, the episode if you want to go back and look at that. Or you can just check out, if you follow me on Instagram, you could check out my Instagram where I listed all of the uh, different designs that I'm, um, I, you know, I'm not going to hold myself to it. Of course, I, I, I want to remain open to new things coming my way and I already have a couple new things that have come my way um, that are you know down here on the floor that I'll show you when I get to the whip section um, but yeah 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 yeah. so moving on moving on um, my second finished object Martha is wearing and this this one I actually began uh, sorry I have like a little sniffles um, I actually began this one in November. I think I cast it on Thanksgiving weekend, um, but it got derailed by a Christmas sweater that I made um, for a knit along, and um, and it was a fingering weight. That was a fingering weight sweater on size three, U.S. size three, or 2.75 needles, which just took forever. Um, I finished it just in time for Christmas, but this one got set aside so that I could do that. So I wanted to get back into it. I was really hoping to wear this sweater to Vogue Knitting Live, but I did not finish it in time. I ended up, um, I, what ha I actually ended up seeing the future and seeing that I was going to run out of yarn, um, before I could knit the second sleeve. So I, um, scoured Ravelry and found, um, a couple people that had partial skeins of the same exact yarn and, and color. And I just decided I was gonna email all of them and see if any of them would sell me their yarn. And the first person I emailed responded right away and um, she was willing to sell me her partial skein. So I figured I only needed about half a skein um, and she had three quarters of a skein. So I figured more is better. So yeah, I had to put this on hold while I waited for that yarn to arrive. And I didn't wanna, I was about, to here on this on the first sleeve and 
I didn't want to um, keep knitting it with the yarn I had on hand only because I was worried that the dye lot would be off and I thought, okay, if the dye lot's off, I'm just gonna alternate skeins on, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll frog up to the armpit and then just alternate skeins all the way down the sleeve and then do the same on the second sleeve. The partial skein came in and it was spot on. Like I could not see, and I don't think you'll see um, when I show you the sweater up close, the d difference in the dialects at all. Like super impressive. So this is Jill Draper Makes Stuff. I don't think I have the label anymore, but this is her newest Kingston base. It is 100% Targi. Um, um, I think Targi American from American Farms, US Farms wool it's amazing and gorgeous and beautiful and um, actually i'm gonna i'm gonna grab um the skein as well as do a costume change um on martha in a in a minute so you'll see it up close but it's so i don't know if, i think you can even see from this distance though that the yarn is uh, sort of a deep purple color and there are it's heathered though so there are like flecks of um you can really see the gold right there but there's up close there's flecks of red and blue as well um so it's really really beautiful the pattern is my own design it is called fun mary's driving cardigan i had originally made this pattern in a uh, superwash indie dyed yarn that was very busy and i did it a year ago i did it i made that pattern made and released that pattern in november of 2017 and at the time that I finished it, I had said on this channel that I was planning to, I wanted to plan to make that design in a sheepy wool. So I, um, I didn't know at the time that I bought this yarn. I bought this, this, this yarn, this Jill Draper I bought in Rhinebeck of 2018. So I've already used some of my Rhinebeck stash, which made me very, very happy. It's actually the, also, it's not quite dry. The pockets, the inside of the pockets are a little damp, but I just wanted to get it done and get it up on the form so that you could, you could see it. I made some modifications with this version. I um, put buttons on it. So the original version, the pattern, does not have buttons. Instead, it has a belt that you attach in the back. So let me show you the back. The back has this really cute, back waist detail there is a little bit of for three different rows you do do a little bit of hip shaping this is a bottom-up design so you start at the bottom um, knitting back and forth in one piece up to the armpit then you split for the back and split for the fronts so you do the fronts each front separately and then you do the um, back separately as well and then the sleeves are knit from the sleeve cap on down um, there's this beautiful it's not really a twisted rib it's called rickrack rib because twisted rib would mean that you're knitting you're doing the twist in the same direction so this one you switch the direction of the the rib of the top um, stitch that so you're always like crisscrossing across the top um, so it gives you this really cute rickrack pattern, which I'll show you up close in a few minutes. Has pockets and has this gorgeous shawl collar. And um, in the knitting, what you do, and I'll show you this up close as well, um, what you do is you slowly reverse the, the so you, I think you can see the line right there, you slowly reverse the rickrack ribbing from, so that you're seeing the reverse side here, to the top side so that when the collar rolls over, you just get the top of the rickrack ribbing. Um, there's a seam join here in the back, so across the um, back of the shawl collar, you're doing a three needle bind off to join those. And you also have seaming on the shoulder here. Everything else is knit all in one piece. And then of course, stitching down the pockets and the pocket trim, which also have the rickrack ribbing, which you can see right there, yeah. So I haven't even worn this yet. It just, it was on the blocking mats for the, since Friday and this is, so it's Sunday and it's still a little damp where it was multi-layered. So the layer of the front with the pocket in between and laying on top of the back, um, that's, this is damp right here, this section here. Um, the rickrack is pretty good. The sleeves were the first to dry. 
Um, and that's this crease that you're seeing is from the blocking. Yeah, I'm so happy with it. I can't wait to wear it. It's been so cold, so I'm gonna wear it this week to work for sure. Um, I'll also put a picture in here of what it looks like on me, but I'm gonna um, stop the clip here and grab the skein so I could show you it up close and also switch um, with Martha. So um, Martha is my form. She is my size, except she, my hip is probably slightly larger than hers. Um, but her, from about high hip up, she's exactly my size. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change with her right now and give you a different view. Okay, I'm back. Um, all right, so I have, I grabbed the, the, the um, sleeve. That's, that's how much yarn I have left. It was a um, 113 gram skein. So if I remember right, I think I bought four skeins. I'll, I'll correct it on screen if, if I'm wrong. Um, so I ended up needing another 30 grams. So I really needed five and a third or so skein wise. Um, and this is the yarn. This is what it looks like up close. It's just so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Just really multifaceted. Um, and yeah, so this is this is what I, it looks like. So one of the things that happened to me when I went from um, superwash to a sheepy wool to this wool, which it she it she says it's DK weight, which is the way the pattern pattern was designed using superwash DK weight. Um, I had to when I swatched, I had to go down a needle size and down a size in order to get my size, and I still think like. The way it was sort of loose and, and um, baggy on Martha, it was it's that way on me too, actually. Like it's maybe with jeans, it won't be it won't be as noticeable, but it's got a, I have a little bit more ease in the hip than than I would need, but it it's fine. Like I can totally layer under it and stuff. So, but I think I think you can get a feel for how it looks on the body. Um, really really like it it's so cozy and warm this is my first time putting it on so this is it's i really really love it yeah what else can i tell you about it so all again mods that i did going from a um non-superwash from a superwash to a non-superwash i listed everything that i did on that oh i have a very important mod that i did i don't think I've got this listed on there quite yet, but I did put down um, the, the buttonholes situation scenario that I did. Um, and I found these beautiful, um, let me show you up close, these beautiful leather and brass buttons. I got them on uh, Amazon. They were really expensive because they came from England, but I really loved them and I bought more than I needed, which made them more expensive. And I actually bought little buttons because I thought, let me show you this. I thought that, can I show you, see so you can see how loose it is on me, um, and don't mind my yoga pants, but <laughs> I thought that I would get a little droop, like there's a tiny droop, but I thought it would be worse right here, so I bought littler buttons that I could put on the inside to hold that up, like, you know, across from, so that, like I would place a little button like right here, right at about same, same um, distance from the bottom as this one. So I thought I would do that with uh with all of them um but i don't think i need to do it I, I don't know i'll see i'll wear it one time if it's really bugging me i do have the littler buttons that i can i can fix um for that yeah um yeah so oh the, the last mod that i made i this is like designer error but I mean I thought I had a long I had a few days to sort of think about it and why this happened um, so on my original pattern and actually I have the original sample too I did um, Rick Rack ribbing on this on the sleeve cuffs so but when you're knitting the sleeve when you're knitting this part you're knitting flat you're going back and forth um, and so that Rick Rack ribbing you're doing something every every row so whether you're knitting or purling you're you're maneuvering the stitches that's how you get that zigzag that zigzag effect um, right here that you see right here so you see that zigzag effect 
And then this is the roll that I was talking about as well. So you see how it it switches over and then on the inside you can see the the change over there. Um, so when you get to the cuff, you're doing that in the round, but my instructions don't say anything more than just make rick rack rib for three inches. And I didn't say how, <laughs> but knowing myself, it, the answer is probably really, really obvious. I couldn't figure it out. I was getting so frustrated um, earlier in the week, like trying to knit in a rick rack rib in the round. So I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did. So I just did a two by one um, rib cuff, which I'll put that in the mods um, for on my project page. I don't think I've listed that yet. Um, that's the seam that's on the bottom of the sweater. So the sweater has a two by one because the rick rack ribbing is done in a two by one. Um, so you're doing two knit stitches to one purl stitch on the front side and uh, one knit to two purls on the back side. So um, my guess is that it's really obvious like the, because I didn't write anything. It did not work doing the right side row over and over because you don't get it going back and forth. You only get it going in the one direction. So it just becomes a twisted rib. Yeah, so I don't really know. I don't have the answer. I, if I have the answer, I will um, put that in my pattern instructions. <laughs> um, no one has, a, a few, several people have bought the pattern and a couple people have made it. I have not um, heard from anyone asking me about that. But um, if someone asked me today, my answer would be just do it two by one. I don't know what I did to get there. I may have to undo, I may have to unravel a little bit of what I knit my first sample just to see if it worked. But yeah, none, no testers said anything. So I don't know. User error? <laughs> designer error, user error, it doesn't matter, it was me. It was all me. <laughs> Not sure. Not really sure. Uh, anyway, okay, moving on. So these are my two finished objects. Um, first one of the year, second one of the year. Um, I have two more sweaters that are moving along and pretty close, and then I have two other one is a long-term project. I'm gonna show you that last. So let me show you my second, um, my first whip that, this is what I worked on, ended up working on while I was waiting for the yarn for this to come along. And I don't think you can tell anywhere on here where the transition between the colors happened. It was definitely on this sleeve. But yeah, I don't see it at all, not even on screen. Usually on screen re reveals more, but it's completely the same. So super impressive, Jill Draper, super impressive consistency in dyeing, wow. Or maybe I just got lucky and I got one out of the same dye lot. I don't know, the woman who I bought the yarn from, she'd bought it in her local yarn shop. So who knows, man, who knows? Anyway, my first whip that I'm gonna show you, the one that occupied me while I waited for the, the uh, partial skein of Kingston yarn to come, is this. It is the an Aran Weight Winterfell cardigan. So that's how much I've done. So I've knit the top and I have um, split for the sleeves and I've got about four inches or so. Um, it's of course it's Aran weight so it goes super fast I probably waited about a week for that yarn and this is how much I was able to knit in a week so and as soon as the yarn came I stopped um, working on the this I put this on Martha and took that this off of Martha and um, began knitting finishing this one but yeah I love 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 the way this is coming out um, it's not really TV knitting 100%. Um, I did do a lot of work on this last weekend um, where I was visiting friends and I stayed over at one of my friend's houses for the weekend he, at his weekend home. And we um, 
sat around. It was so cold and rainy, so we sat around and watched a lot of movies, and I did a lot of knitting. And um, there was a point where we were watching, I can't remember which movie we were watching, but I had to put this down and pick up something that was really, truly mindless and to um, because I just was having trouble. I think the thing with this pattern not to not to give anything away but um, when you're knitting it you are doing this little detail here and you as the knitter decide uh, where to put the next line she tells you the patterns give you instructions but it's sort of I find it kind of confusing because <laughs> you're always moving this line over one stitch and you're supposed to wait till there's a certain number of stitches over here on right on this section as you're coming across um before you start a new line and i always am like am i counting it before i move this over or after so i just tried to be consistent as i was putting those lines in on each side so that if i added a line um on one side i was adding that same row i was adding a line on the other side but i have been off ever so slightly but i don't think it's going to matter because i think once the ribbing is um, on it, on the front, it's not really gonna, they're not gonna completely line up down, going down the front anyway, because of that ribbing, that, that, uh, um, inch or so of ribbing is gonna change the, the place that they land anyway, so, and if it's off by a row or two, I'm not gonna be that worked up about it. Um, I shared these in my Vogue Knitting Live, video but I want to show you just in case you know maybe you're a brand new brand brand new viewer and you didn't see these oh crap I don't have them okay quick oh I didn't talk about the yarn either one sec I'm back I wanted to show you my buttons because they're so beautiful this this button I swear is gonna make this it's gonna make this sweater so there's my button my camera will focus. It's a glass button. It's got this gorgeous cut to it. Right in the center is a little metal marcasai. I don't think they're vintage. I just think they're vintage inspired. But I bought these on Vogue because this is very definitely a plastic back. Um, I bought these at Vogue Knitting, I mean not at Vogue Knitting Live, but I bought them that weekend. I went to Tinder Buttons in New York City to pick up buttons for several cardigans. That are, I'm in cardigan land, by the way. Cardigan, cardigan, cardigan. I don't think last year I made one cardigan. Um, I think I made all pullovers. All my sweaters were pullovers. Um, but right, I'm in cardigan mode and I actually have two other cardigans. Uh, the yarn is caked up and, and ready for me to, you know, cast on whenever I'm ready to cast on. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is just gonna be gorgeous. Look at that match. Didn't I do good? These are also wickedly expensive buttons. Oh, come on. Cat, 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 focus. There we go. Yeah, those are gonna be great. Okay, yes. Yes, yes, love that. Okay, the yarn. The yarn is um, a indie dyed yarn. All the way from England, um, it is Stranded Dye Works, Merino Erin, from um, by Amy, also known as Amy Florence, and Stranded. She's on um, YouTube as well. The colorway is Midnight Sun, and I bought this yarn, this a sweater's quantity, at her birthday sale in November. So I think it was both her company birthday and her birthday. I think she's in November. Um, birthday. So anyway, yeah, that is a whip that got a lot of love and attention. And now that uh, my Kingston Fun Mary sweater is off the needles, I will be going back to this really soon. And it's living in my fringe supply company bag um, that I put a dark fairy patch on. Yeah, this is the first fringe supply bag I ever bought. And I bought it a few years ago. It's been a long time. Been, been, been around, seen a lot of good projects. Okay. My um, next work in progress, this is actually a pullover, yay. Yeah, so this will be my first pullover of the year. So with the sweater that 
Martha's wearing. Now you can see it, my Clinton Hill cashmere with the color work down here. It's it's not really cropped. I'm kind of an old lady, so I don't really want to wear cropped. Cropped sweaters don't really want to show any skin because it's not pretty anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> so my crop it this is my version of a crop sweater. So this I would I think it's uh 20 it's like, so high hip, so her waist, Martha's waist is way up there. So Martha's waist is here, which mirrors where my waist is. The high hip would be about here. I think this is a 24 inch sweater or so, 23 and a half, I think is what it comes out to. Um, of course you can make, should you buy the pattern, get the pattern, um, buy the yarn and get the pattern, you can make it any length you want. I could get away with slightly more cropped if I have um, a high waist pair of pants or a skirt on because waist again is there. So yeah, I could probably be that short and still be okay. Um, I don't know why, why am I telling you all this? Oh, so <laughs> the yarn that I bought, it's, it does relate back to this lovely thing sitting on my lap. Um, the yarn that I bought, when I bought this yarn, I bought nine skeins. Um, when I was doing the math conversion, that was, I don't think I, I think I ended up going down a size to get the, the um, sizing right for me. So I went down, a, not just a needle size, I kept the needle size, but I went down a size size, I think. Anyway, I overbought on yarn and I ended up, I only needed a little over six skeins, so like 6.2 skeins for this sweater. And I had um, one and a half extra skeins of the sand, and I had a full extra skein of the black. So I, um, at Vogue, I decided to buy more <laughs> so I could make another sweater, like a different sweater. And I didn't really know exactly what I was going to buy, but I just figured I'm going to make something where I'm t combining the yarn I have left, the one and a half of the the um, beige color, the light sand color, and one skein of black with probably four, but I'm going to buy five to be safe, skeins um, of some other color. And um, Rebecca, the owner of Clinton Hill, her color palette for the DK, because the DK's new, is pretty limited. It's I think it's five or six colors. And I don't wear red sweaters, so I wasn't going to take red, though that would be probably the obvious choice for many people. I also don't really wear olive green. Um, I have, but I don't, I usually wear it, I'll wear it in pants, but I don't really wear it on top. It's a little drab. So that left her camel color her um, pale pink, which is, uh, I think it's called blush. It's very, very pale. Um, and her gray color. I think that was all that was left of my choices. Or I could have just bought more black or more of the light sand and done something that way. But I was really determined to do a third color. So I went into her booth and chatted with her and um, introduced myself and um, I ended up buying charcoal gray. So now you can, oh, whoops, unraveling. Runaway ball. Okay, so Clinton Hill, there's the label. So you get a good, stop focusing on Martha. <laughs> oh, there we go. Perfect, there you go. Get the whole spiel there. Um, the skeins are 50 grams for the curious there are or 1.75 ounces and 125 yards of the DK um, She has a heavier weight. It's a worsted weight So I um, over the past couple weeks, I've been thinking about what kind of pattern did I want? Um, was there a pattern that existed and I got into my head this uh, drop shoulder similar like in terms of the, this is a drop shoulder this the um seam for the or the join for the sleeve to the body is down here so i wanted to do sort of a slouchy drop shoulder body with a, a snug sleeve so actually not not too far off of what i'm wearing like the idea and i want it to be i may i'm not quite sure what i'm going to do with the body yet but i I may actually add stitches so it's kind of a 
not a trapeze exactly because that's too extreme but that it has a little bit more ease as it goes down so um, I'm, I've got to make that decision soon because I've already split for the sleeves on this piece and then I had to think also besides silhouette about color placement so I'm going to just give you a peek of what I've done so far so it's going to be a stripe kind of stripey kind of color block design it's a top-down pattern it's my own design um, and it I've already split for the sleeves as you can see right here and this is going to be the only place besides the neck where you will see light sand on this sweater this light color so that little drab I showed you before that's about uh, 12 grams or about 35 yards that's gonna I hope be enough for the neckband so it'll have a sand colored neckband it'll just be a crew neck this fits like a perfect it's a perfect crew neck I know you can't see it too well because it's rolling but um, yeah and the the markers are just about this is where my shoulder join is and this is the center front so just to reminders for me for that um, but yeah, this is going to be a primarily gray sweater because that's the, the color that I have the most of. Um, so I'm excited to continue showing this. This I've been knitting on this nonstop. I cast it on as soon as I got this off the needles. I cast this on on um, Friday evening and been working on it most of the weekend or a lot of the week. And I haven't actually been knitting nonstop this weekend at all. I've had some other things that I've been working on non-knitting things life life things like laundry and cleaning and cooking and things like that um so yeah i i'm so excited to share more with you i may even have this done by my next podcast because dk weight goes fast erin weight dk weight i hope to have two more fo's next time we speak see each other but yeah i'm excited and i will be dropping the black in i have um Here's my full skein of black. Um, so I will be dropping that in the sweater as well. I'm interested to see how this cashmere yarn um, wears. I mean, so far so good. I've worn this sweater a couple times. I don't see any pilling. Because uh, cashmere is pretty notorious for pilling. It's a very uh, delicate fiber. It's probably one of the most delicate fibers um, in, in clothing. It Fragile, I guess, is probably a better word for it. It's a little fragile. Um, cashmere sweaters will be the first to go on the elbows and stuff and I have at work my um, full-time job as a professor I have a L return desk and it's on my right side so I end up often like leaning like having that elbow on my desk as I type on my keyboard so that my I have a lot of sweaters that have that I've I have worn out the elbow on the sleeves so hoping uh that won't happen with this. I have a lot of elbow patches on my on my sweaters, but I don't mind them. They're they're fine, totally fine. So, but so far so good. I mean, I've worn this a couple times to the office and um, to other things, and it's been really awesome. Okay, so that is my second whip. How am I doing on time? I know I'm cutting some out because I've gotten up and done stuff, but okay. The other my mindless knit that I've been working on is uh, an old whip. I'll have to check to see when I last, when I first cast this on. I think it was around, I know the weather was getting warm. I think it was late spring, early summer. This is the uh, Ma Mama Luker. And what it is, is a pair of shorts. So I affectionately call these booty shorts. Um, I'm following the pattern. My intention was to make a um, pair of shorts, like wooly warm. This is a merino cashmere nylon blend from Plucky Knitters. It's the primo sport base because it's um, the pattern calls for sport base. But I'm knitting it on these teeny tiny needles, so it's just taking forever. These are U.S. size one and a half or. I think 2.25 millimeter is what the one and a halfs are. 
Uh, tell you in one sec. I have it here. 2.5 millimeter. This is what the, this is a free pattern. You can find it online. It's, um, there's the name, Marmaluka 2.0, and it's by a designer named Maya Carlson. I'll have everything in the show notes. She released the pattern in February of 2016. So this is, this is where I got it from, um, on, online. And, uh, yeah, she has a fold over waistband, which I, after I'm done, I'm going to see how I like that. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm of two minds of it. One is like, wow, that's extra bulk. So if I'm wearing a skirt with a waistband and um, I have this, these shorts on underneath, that's gonna be bulky around my waist. But the other thing I was thinking was that I could wear it unfolded and that would be an extra layer of warmth, like right here. Cause that's a spot that um, in the cold weather, that's, that's something that, a place that gets cold um, often, so. So that, yeah, that might be, that might be what, what I do um, with that. And I am, I'm gonna show you another picture with the pattern. I'm about to, I'm about right there. I'm about to do, there's some short row shaping that you do um, across the, like just where the short will fit under your buttock. So I'm about to, to do that part. I'm probably about a quarter inch away, which a quarter inch in this yarn and this needle is like three rows. It's a lot, a lot of, a lot of knitting to get there. Um, but yeah, so, so these have been getting a little bit of love. I, I'm not going to commit to when I'll have them done. Um, they've, you know, the nice thing about this, cause I, I am a garment knitter. I'm not a sock knitter. I don't really make, I've made three pairs of no, four, five pairs of socks in my knitting life, and I don't enjoy making them. I don't enjoy wearing them. I like, I really love smart wool <laughs> socks. I love the way they fit. I love the way they wear. I love the, you know, the only thing I don't love about them is the price, but $15 or $12 if you find them on sale for a pair versus 20 or $30 for a skein of yarn to knit them. Yeah. Give me smart wool any day. Sorry, sorry, sock, sock lovers. I know there's a lot of sock knitting, sock knitting lovers out there, and a lot of people that just um, like Mina Phillips of Knitting X Pack, Pat, who just make has socks on her needles at all times. Um, so that that's not me. So um, because I don't have socks on the needles, knitting on the go can sometimes be challenging. Like I can I can definitely take the uh, this is my cashmere sweater my new cashmere design I can easily take this for a while also cashmere is lighter weight than wool um, so I could take this for a while but it's gonna reach a point where I'm not gonna be able to take it easily um, to meetings or things it's just gonna be a big piece that's gonna sit on my lap and where this is small so this has been sort of my on-the-go travel knitting um, unless I have a piece that's small enough that I can take then it gets bumped while I do that well and but once I have something too big this comes back out again and and uh, comes with me because I, I probably shouldn't say this but I do knit when I get into traffic jams on my way to work so I often am in traffic jams on my way on my way home I don't know why I don't usually hit traffic but on my way to work I often hit traffic um, so I will you know when I'm in a bumper to bumper traffic sitting there waiting for uh, you know a stalled car or something to get pulled over to the side I'll knit a couple rows, so that's that's what I that's what I do with this. So this is coming along. I'll update you. Um, if you don't see it, it means I haven't worked on it. So this is the first time I've actually worked on this this month, um, probably in like three or four months. So um, long time viewers, you haven't seen this in a while, but that's why because I just didn't have anything to share with you about it. Okay, and this is living in my, this has been in here forever since I started it, a pink hazel uh, travel bag with a little, you know, so you could knit, put this on your on your wrist and, and knit while you walk, which I do a lot of walking, so do, I do like that. Um, I'm looking for it, so I, I don't, I think I've, I mentioned this briefly, I keep forgetting that this is happening and I haven't really done a lot of prep for it, but I'm going to EYF. I booked it. I ha I'm completely booked. I've got 
a class booked. I've got my tickets. I'm going to the Make Wool event. I have my ticket for the Make Wool event on Sunday. Um, and I will be in Edinburgh for a about a week. My one, my youngest son is traveling with me, so I'm so excited. He loves to drink whiskey, so he loves whiskey. And I told him that all I needed from him was that he um, drink whiskey with me in the evening and have meals with me. And otherwise he could do whatever he likes um, during the day while I'm at the festival. But we are gonna spend some time sightseeing as well. Why did I say that? I had a point. Oh, pink hazel. Cause I really want more pink hazel swag. So um, I want like a needle case and uh, I have one from her already, but I need another one. Uh, Cause my needles are all growing that one. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing her at uh, EYF. Okay, one more work, work in progress. Okay, so this work in progress, this is something new that I cast on since the last time I did a full episode. Um, and this is the Brewster shawl that is, um, oh, fudge, I'm in the middle of a row, so I won't really be able to show you too well, but you'll, you'll get the idea. So this is the Brewster shawl. It is a design that, another design that I sold to Long Island Yarn and Farm. Um, so again, you can get the pattern with purchase from Long Island Yarn and Farm. And I'll show you the full sweater on screen, or shawl rather, this is a shawl. So this one is contrary to the original one with two very high contrast colors. The other color was actually, I used this, um, what is this color called? No, this isn't champagne. I'll, I'll, I think it's on tags in my bag. Um, but anyway, I used this tan color this with a purple that's very similar to the color of my sweater, a very deep dark purple. This time around I did low contrast, so I'm using this very pale blush color. And uh, what you do with this sweater, this is a center, uh, sorry, shawl. With this shawl, it's a center out build. So you start in the very center and you make a circle. You knit a circle, start with eight stitches, cast on in a circle. And from there you change to a square and then um, eventually you change to a rectangle. And then um, in the part that I'm in, you're doing a three-sided uh, rectangle. So I am mid-row so I can't open it up to show you and then after that it's knit all in one piece you knit after you do some three-sided building you build the um, it ends up being a triangle so you build the the two wings I guess and then last you come back and um, down here I've got some some uh, stitches on waist yarn uh, you come back and do the bottom of the triangle down there so but this is oh my god this yarn this yarn this is Long Island Yarn and Farm yarn um, that I'm using as well. I bought it at Rhinebeck, um, where my shawl made its debut. So now I can tell you the, okay, citrine, that's what it's called. So the beige is called citrine. There you go, you see all the details there. It's it's luxury yarn, it's high, high priced. I didn't even, I don't think I realized it was that expensive. That's the citrine. And then the pink is called pink clove. Also, high-end luxury yarn. Al they're both alpaca wool blends. I actually think, wait, I think the citrine has a dash of silk in it. Yeah, oh, alpaca silk blend, sorry. The citrine is an alpaca silk blend. And the pink clove is an alpaca wool with a little bit of icicle. The icicle makes creates a little bit of a sparkle, um, which you only see when the, you know, in, in certain lighting and stuff. It's a, like the, my camera, and I don't think very many video cameras can actually pick it up. So I have, actually I have the pattern. Do I have pictures on this pattern? No, yeah, no. So yeah, I, um, I'm working away on this. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling kind of saturated with shawls and I did, I really wanted to, um, make some progress on this because I spent some time in the Long Island Yarn and Farm booth and so I wanted to get this at least cast on and and moving along so that I could share it with customers who were interested in 
um, trying out different colorways uh, for the shawl. It is just a two skein project, so you just need one skein of each color, uh, and you use practically all of it. Like you will use almost all the yarn in order to make the um, shawl. So I think I think when I did my sample, I even ripped out the. Um, I ended up ripping out the swatch. That's how close it was for me when I was knitting. Um, of course, your your tension and mileage will vary and yardage will vary depending on what you're what you're doing. So those are all my whips um, that I have on the needles. I think I'm in front of my, my I'm in my little crafty corner of my living room. So I have a whole bunch of project bags. I, I don't usually work this way. I'm not usually this organized, but lined up in front of my yarn storage bin, which I don't think you can really see, but the, yeah, there you go. You can kind of see it there. So lined up in front of my storage bin are project bags with your caked yarn ready for me to cast on whenever I am inspired <laughs> to cast those yarns on and those designs on. And I've got the patterns for the most part purchased and printed and in the bag too. So I can even just grab a bag and run with it if I want, like go with it. Um, but I'm super satisfied with what I'm working on right now. Um, the the d patterns and the things that I'm working my way through. Um, I am, for the most part, working in heavier weight yarns, which surprised me. So this is DK weight. This is DK weight. Another DK weight um, in progress and Aaron weight <laughs> in progress. Um, and that Aran weight, that's going really fast. So if I were monogamous, and I'm not, um, with my knitting, I would uh, probably finish that in a week. I would give myself maybe another week. But I think I'm probably going to mostly, while I'm knitting at home, go shift back and forth between those two sweaters, those two garments. And um, the shawl will probably take a back seat to them. And uh, the shawl I actually might keep for for plain knitting it's good plain knitting um, for my trip so I, I may end up doing that probably finish it on that trip because um, it's light it's lightweight it's two skeins it's good it's good travel knitting um, and the marmaluca who knows who knows I do have a little bit of stash acquisition to share with you um, you you saw a sneak peek of one of these on um, my my uh, Vogue Knitting Live recap because I had bought some yarn at Vogue to pair with it, which I should grab. I will grab. Be right back. So I'm first going to show you the yarn that I bought. So at Rhinebeck, so this is how things like stay with you. And actually, so I'm going to give you a little a little lesson in what makes good art, and it but it relates to yarn, so just bear with me. So this is gonna be a quick little, like this is what I tell my art students, because I I'm a, I said I was a professor, but I didn't say what I teach. I mostly, I teach classes about culture and art and culture and communication and um, things along that line, those lines. Um, there's more to it, but just generally speaking, like in broad strokes, that's what I teach about. So, um, what I tell my students is that when you go to see, go to an art exhibit, whether it's at a museum or at a, um, a yarn, uh, sorry, yarn, an, a gallery, so any setting, or you see outside art, or you see like you know, um, installation art, whatever, like a big sculpture somewhere. If that piece is making you think and you are still thinking about it a few hours or a few days or a few weeks after you saw it, that is a good artwork. That is a successful artwork. If it's a piece of artwork that you look at and you figure it out and you're not still thinking about it a few hours or a few days or a few weeks after you've seen it, that was bad art. <laughs> So, um, and I think it's the same with yarn. So, I mean, it's all sort of creative. Like for me, I guess I just sort of made that connection. Like if I'm, if I see some yarn and I'm still thinking about it a few days or a few weeks down the road, then that's yarn that is 
somehow gotten under my skin and into my psyche and I must have it. <laughs> so, um, cause I often will go like even to Vogue, I looked at a lot of yarn that I loved, but I didn't purchase. Um, and I thought I, I can buy it another way. Like I can get it online. I can get it from this person's shop or this, you know, if it's not exclusive or a limited run the chances are good that I can get it somewhere else so or at at another time anyway this is one of those yarns that I saw at Rhinebeck did not buy because the booth was crowded and I just kept moving which is also part of my mo when I'm at my modus operandus when I am at um, events if it's too crowded I'm going to spend too much time trying to get something I won't I just won't bother like mm, not that important don't need to have it now don't need to have it today um, so I looked at this yarn and liked it but I didn't fully appreciate it until after Rhinebeck was over and I was thinking about it and I went back to look at it um, you're probably dying to know what it is you're probably just saying shouting at the screen shut up and show us <laughs> So it is Nightshades by Harrisville Designs. Let me put up a second skein so it gets fully blocked. So we can fully block me and Martha. So yeah, I bought some Nightshade. It's American Cormo, 100% Cormo by Harrisville Designs. It is a, a DK weight. DK weight. There you go. There's all the info. If only camera would focus. Grown in Montana, spun in New Hampshire. I have to read it for you because the camera doesn't want to focus. Come on, camera. Anyway, I'll read it to you. Um, grown in Montana, spun in New Hampshire by Harrisville Designs. Harrisville is in is a city in uh, Pennsylvania, I believe. I, I know that the company is in Pennsylvania. Um, so this is the color last call so what nightshades is is i believe that they use i'm not 100 percent sure but i think they use black naturally black sheep wool and spin it with a color um a, a white color that's been dyed so this is the um light blue so if you've been if you're a long time viewer you know blue 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 I love blue. Um, so I knit a lot of blue um, colors, like all shades of blue. I just really like blue. Um, but yeah, this I just thought this was beautiful. I have zero ideas of what, I don't know what this will end up being, but I did buy a sweater's quantity. I have five skeins and they're 250 yard put ups, so it's 1250 yards. So yeah gonna be very pretty the yarn that I bought at Vogue that I think might go with it is a spin cycle yarn because um, I was thinking I wanted to keep my options open and perhaps do color work so I think that would be a really nice I wanted to do something in the tonal scheme um, actually now that I'm thinking about it my birthday's coming up in a couple weeks and these are totally I'm a Pisces and these are totally Pisces colors <laughs> and this would be a good birthday cast on but i actually think i have another birthday cast on planned but i have no idea what i'm making with this anyway so um and i bought the uh dream state um spin cycle in case you're wondering and i think i think they'll play well together this is they call this i think they call this a worsted weight yeah so spin cycle says this is worsted weight um I don't think it's that far off this this DK weight anyway. Um, I'm gonna see how they'll. Of course, I'll be swatching and stuff. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I guess maybe it is a little thicker. Anyway, these may be a future sweater or not. <laughs> we'll see. No plans yet. Um, my other new stash acquisition. Let me just see how I'm doing on time. Good. Is uh part of a yarn club that I, this is my last installment of the Laneway Club from Life in the Long Grass. Life in the Long Grass is a indie dyer in Ireland and her Laneway Club was a natural dyed, she may be doing another batch of it, I don't know, I didn't, if she's is, I didn't see the notice, but it, usually they ship out and then send a notice out that they're doing another one. Um, but this, the Laneway Club was, um, 
Caroline, I think is her name, Caroline picked plants and um, objects from her yard where that she used to naturally dye. So um, this that's and natural dyeing, if you don't know anything about it, produces softer pastel -y colors. And if you don't know this indie dyer, that's also her thing. Like she tends to do softer, paler um, colors. So she has a soft palette, I would say, in her um, in her yarns. And so besides also using natural dyes, she was she said that the uh, club would also be dyed on um, non-superwash bases. So this is a 70-30 alpaca wool blend, um, non-superwash, yeah. And she dyed it with cooch and dried rose hips from her garden, is what it says, onto alpaca yarn to create a soft tone. So I would say this is like a nice, buttery camel color. And I thought for fun, um, I would just show you all three, since this was a three month installment, uh, three month club, I would show you all three together. So my first month was this rose pink one. My second month was this minty green one. And then this last one was this sort of caramel, buttery caramel colored one. So um, the the, these two are the same yarn, so the same base. These are 70-30 um, alpaca wool blends. And then this mint soft celadon green one is a BFL Shavat blend. Um, they're all fingering weight. So, I mean, now that these are, I have two of the same, these could go together in a project. Um, I also have, um, I was thinking about this the other day, I have some, um, maybe I can reach it. Um, I have some indie dyed, wait, I'm gonna reach it because you, I need to see these together and so do you. Okay, so I have, I bought a, a long, long time, like probably like over two years ago. Um, I bought from the indie dyer Earthstone Fibers. I think she's still dying. Um, I bought three skeins of Alpaca Silk Cashmere. So I think those would go well, but I mean, color-wise, they're like in the same wheelhouse. So look at this. Let's see, so I got, I have two of this color, these, this gorgeous like blues and pinks and purple color. So that's, that's the label. So again, these are a couple years old, so I'm not sure if she's still dying or if she's changed your label. And then the other color I have, I have one skein of this brighter, um, reminds me of the 4th of July for some reason. <laughs> Look at that speckle right there. Um, same content though. So, I mean, my thought was that, you know, I had bought these three together. So my thoughts were that these three would make a good something, but now I have these two. Those definitely, that soft rose from Life in the Long Grass and with any of these would be fine. I think also that would be fine. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they'll be, but I thought those looked amazing together and who knows if they'll all grow up to be something, but I will keep you posted. Um, I have one last thing to share with you. I just want to share a um, future project that I swatched. So I have been talking about knitting the Sinister Cat 